Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for what is the Git Actor Bounds node. This is the Git Actor Bounds node, and what it does is it gets the bounds of an actor, or the boundary box, or the area basically that is around an actor. So let's look at it. I'll hit play, and you can see this black box surrounding my character right here. These are the actor bounds. Now there's a couple things here, so let's go ahead and take a look at the node itself. It takes in an actor as the target. In this case, I'm grabbing one of my enemies and putting it in as the target. And the only option it has here is the only colliding components option. Sometimes the actor bounds node works weirdly. As you can see in this case, when I hit play, you wouldn't expect it to be this big for the bounds. There's some issues with getting bounds based on volumes and things like that, where sometimes it doesn't give you back the exact bounds that you would expect. And that's what the colliding components option is for. So if we hit play this time, you'll notice we get something much more like we expect. And you'll actually notice I have it on a tick, so you can see it moving in and out as our character idles. But you will notice something here. It still seems like it's too far forward. Well, that's not really the case. If we pull up our character inside of our blueprint editor, and we look at the viewport, we actually have a stick here. And we go down here, and we turn on visible, and you actually see we have a stick in front of our character. We play this again. Now you can see that our bounding box more accurately represents what we'd expect. With the bounding box basically being the upper limits of our character, the lower limits of our character, and the side, and the forward, and the backwards. So basically the X, Y, and Z extents in all directions based on our collision. And in this case, you can see the front end here is based on the tip end of our stick because it has collision enabled. The bottom would be our feet of our character. The top would be the head. The back would be the back part, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like that because we're using the collision, which you can see here we have our collision capsule. That's why we have a little bit behind, a little bit above, a little bit below, and then our stick sticks out. So we get our boundary box that basically is how much of a collision area does this character have in box form. And the output is really nice because it gives us the origin of the box, and then the box extends. And those are both vector threes. I'm using the draw debug node to see it. If we were to split those apart, of course, we can see it's an X, Y, and Z for our extents. And the origin is a X, Y, and Z, or the center point. And that's it. That is what our Git Actor Bounds node does. When I mentioned that it kind of works a little weird sometimes, you saw how on the character, even when I wasn't using the colliding components, it kind of looked like it was being too big. Well, if I grab, for example, a static mesh actor, so my box is in my world, We'll go ahead and get a copy from here, and we'll grab the first object. We don't have only the colliding components. We'll go ahead and set that back up so we can see what it looks like. We'll hit play. It's going to be this box here. You can see it's covering the entire thing. We have no extra. We could grab something else. Let's say our second stack item. It's going to be this box here, and it's going to be the exact thing. So... If you're having an issue where your bounds don't seem to quite encompass exactly what you expect, maybe only check the colliding components or check your actual actor itself. Maybe it has some things extra in the area, arrows and other parts that make up your actor. That's it. That's our Git Actor Bounds node.